Welcome to the SAP HANA Academy. My name's Bob and in this series of videos we're going to be looking at some of the new features in SAP HANA SPS 10. In this series of videos we're going to be looking at some of the new features within Smart Data Integration. In this video we're going to be looking at the new feature of HANA distribution to a remote HANA system in SAP HANA SPS 10. The feature isn't really new as data distribution from HANA has been around for a few releases. So what that means is that from a local HANA system, we're able to update that HANA system or a virtual table in that HANA system. And that will be distributed to the remote data sources database, whether it's SQL Server, Oracle, or in SPS 10, we can now do this with SAP ASE as well as SAP HANA remote systems. And that's what I'm going to show you in this video. So here I have access to two HANA systems. They're both SAP HANA SPS 10. Um, I'm connecting to both of them with the web-based development workbench. Now they look like they're connecting to the same server, but you'll notice that the instance name is different. This instance name here, let's call this my local system, is 00. zero. And this one is 04, and we'll call this the remote system. Now, what I'll do is I'll log into that remote system as a dev01 user. And here you can see we've got a table called employees. So this table exists on that remote system. Now, what I'll do is I'll go to my local system on that other, on that other instance, and I'll log in. And what you can see here is we have a virtual table created in another schema called SHA. Of course, we've covered how to create this virtual table and how to deploy the data provisioning agent in previous videos. But just to quickly summarize, if I expand my provisioning folder, we created a remote source called Remote HANA. And this one points to that other system. So if I expand, we've got access to that Dev1 schema. And within that Dev1 schema, we've got access to that table, which is called employees, as you can see here. If I double click on that remote source, here you can see the name of that remote source that I'm connecting to. So as you would expect, because this is a virtual table, if I update the data here in the remote system, as you can see here with 04, that change should be reflected in my local system, which is indicated with this instance 00. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch a SQL console. I'll paste in some SQL. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to update the um, ID equal 10, and I'm going to change the name of this manager to Bob. So again, if I execute, we can see that one row was affected. And of course, if I refresh, we can see that name has been changed to Bob. And of course, that happened on the remote system. If I go to my local HANA system on the different instance and refresh, we can see that that user has also been changed to the name Bob. So that's kind of obvious. So what is HANA distribution? Well, again, this has existed for other databases in SAP HANA, for SQL Server, for Oracle, for MySQL. In SPS 10, we can now do this for SAP ASE as well as SAP HANA. What it basically means now is that I can update this remote object, and in the remote system, the data will be updated. To demonstrate that, again, I'll launch a SQL console, but this time on my local system, I'll include the same update statement, but of course, of course I'm going to change this name. to Alejandra. And what I'll do is, of course, I'm not going to be updating the employees table because the employees table doesn't exist. I'm going to be taking the, ta the name of that remote object. So I'll drag the name of that remote object and place it here. So instead of update employees, I'm going to update SHA remote HANA underscore employees. I'm changing the name to Alejandra where the ID equals 10. If I execute, 
of course, what you're going to expect is now, even though we're updating this on the local system, the data actually resides on the remote system. So if I go to that virtual table, of course, what we should see that that manager's name now has changed to Bob, from Bob, sorry, to Alejandra. And of course, if I go back to that remote system and refresh, you can see it's been changed here as well. So there's six different adapters which we can do this date of distribution from a HANA system to if you create these virtual tables. Obviously, in SPS 10, you've got now the HANA adapter, so you can do it to an SAP HANA SPS 10 system. You can do it to an SAP ASE system. Of course, because of previous releases, you could do this with DB2, Oracle, MySQL, and Microsoft SQL Server. And lastly, you can do it with what's called the file adapter. So again, if you've got a text file on a remote um, Windows box and you've connected to that with a data provisioning agent, you're able to update the virtual table in HANA here and that will be reflected in your text file. What we've looked at in the previous few videos is how to connect to a remote HANA system. So the date, so we're actually connecting to that remote HANA system with a view. But what we're going to look at in the next video is setting up a replication task. What this means is that the data will, of course, be copied in from the remote system to the local system. And if any change is made to the remote system, that change will instantly be reflected in the local system. That's what we're going to set up in the next video.